Alright, hello everyone, how's it going? This is Chris Rose here, of course, and Mikey Allstar here, and today we have another short film commentary. Oh yeah! Alright, so I do this every time that I have six new short films, we just reached our six new ones since help needed, so let's go ahead and get started, shall we? So I will be covering Spare Parts, Location Scouting, Wandering Soul, White Noise, Have a Great Day, and I'll Never Say Goodbye. So let's go ahead and get started with Spare Parts, shall we? So this one was a lot of fun to film, it was probably one of my favorites to film as well, because I really wanted to experiment more with lighting and shadows and stuff like that, as well as, you know, a little movement and stuff here and there too. So that was a lot of fun. And the story, you know, very much fits the sort of idea of Lego to, you know, spare parts like this guy, this uh, wounded veteran guy that, uh, you know, has been messed up, is looking for, you know, a new arm and stuff like that. Uh, you know, yeah, very Lego thing to do, you know, he's just looking for arms, and, you know, this guy happens to have an arm, so he's going to take the arm. I definitely wanted this one to feel like a little horror-y too, like especially at the end too, that's where the horror really kicks into overdrive, but until then, you know, I wanted just this sort of general feeling of uneasiness from not only just like the story itself, but just sort of like the cinematography too and stuff like that and just the lighting and whatnot that everything is sort of dark and a little vague, so I thought that would be sort of a fun thing to experiment with. And there's like the scene where the main characters all chained up and stuff and there's like that little light effect thing that like uh, sort of sparks to life for a second and shows like another dead body on the ground and um i actually i think that was like my flashlight was like messed up so i just like turned it on and it did that i was like this is pretty cool so i decided to throw that in there just because uh it wasn't actually like you know super realistic in terms of like what a flashing light would do like if there's like only one light bulb in the room you know you'd see more than just that it wouldn't just be like a spotlight sort of thing but i thought it was something kind of cool to mess around with and i added the effect of like you know the the sort of staticky effects, the white flickering effects. I also wanted to keep the fact that this guy, the veteran guy, was missing a hand. That you don't really see that he's missing a hand until a little later when you see like a shot, a full shot of him. Uh, so I wanted to, you know, just to like to appear to like just sort of like a normal guy, if you will, but like you know, like not missing a hand or anything. But then all of a sudden you see that he is indeed, you know, slightly disabled where he has a hand missing. I used to really go for these ambiguous endings, and I do still do go for ambiguous endings. But in this case, though, I feel like it's pretty obvious what happens. You know, the guy loses his hand and stuff like that. And who knows who's to say what happens after that, like what happens to the guy when his hand is cut off and, you know, the other guy puts his hand in the place of where his old hand used to be and stuff like that. Um, so I feel like, you know, maybe there's potential for like a sequel or something, like seeing where this guy goes and what he does, if he gets caught or anything. But, you know, I don't really do sequels to these things. So just sort of just moved on from there. But yeah, this was really fun. This is probably one of my favorite short films to make. It's very dark and messed up. But that sort of is the tendency of these short films, isn't it? All right, and next up we have Location Scouting. Yes, this one's definitely a lot more lighthearted than the other one, even though it does sort of have a dark twist. Now, I'm not really sure where the idea for spare parts came from. It may have just been, you know, just messing around with Lego and just like, like, oh, hey, you know, these guys, you can rip off their arms and stuff, which is pretty messed up. But, you know, they, they hopefully they can't feel anything, right? They're just pieces of plastic, so they're, they're probably not alive, right? So, you know, just that sort of idea, I guess that's probably where this came from. The location scouting, I had this class. It was uh, Intro to Film Studies. It was a fun class where we talked about, you know, get this film. Uh, and, uh, we, you know, we talked about the various parts of film, not only just like movies and stuff like in general, but just sort of like the filmmaking process of like, you know, location scouting and uh, sound and music and all of this different things, uh, all this different stuff in there. Um, and, you know, this idea, like when we're talking about location scouting, I had this like this image of like these two people going out location scouting and they uh, just right after like a mafia hit and the mafia guys like dig a hole and just throw the dead body in there and run away. And then, you know, these location scouters, they see the hole there, like, it's just been dug up, and they think, like, oh, hey, you know, it's like, it's probably buried treasure or something, and it turns out to be a dead body. Yeah, so that's where that idea came from. It's something I was really excited for, especially, like, it was really fun to edit this, too. Like, filming it was fun, but, like, editing especially was really fun, too, like, using the, uh, was it Phil Collins song and stuff like that? Uh, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty much the, the most fun part about it, just, like, figuring out how to edit it and stuff like that. And, like, I like the idea of, like, um, in the phone call, like, you see the two different rooms. That was pretty fun. Like, that's that's just the same set, but I, I put, like, a, a notebook in between the two sets and sort of, like, design one room and then design the other room. And that was pretty much my goal of this one, is to keep that sort of fun and whimsy for a while until, you know, you get the darker twist. You also do see the Mafia guys, too, so I guess it's sort of, like, a hint of, like, darker things to come. Or maybe, you know, you could just assume that perhaps they're looking for treasure as well. Uh, but, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun to make. Uh, definitely one of the more lighthearted ones. Especially uh, very much comparatively to, like, most of them are pretty dark. But that one and, like, the block are pretty lighthearted. But that's, I guess, uh, insert memory card or whatever, reinsert memory card is pretty lighthearted too. But this one, yeah, this one definitely is a little more lighthearted. But it does have that darker twist unlike the other ones. So, yeah, that was, that was just a fun time, you know, just making that just 
this sort of adventure thing with, you know, a dark twist. Now here's the one, I think it's like the first one that I have, like based on some sort of like historical idea, uh, Wandering Soul. There was actually this operation in Vietnam to use uh, psychological warfare against the Viet Cong because, you know, the jungle is very scary and there's, you know, a lot of paranoia in the Vietnam War. So they wanted to sort of take back the jungle. So they developed these various tapes of, you know, just psychological warfare, just like really creepy sounds, uh, various just, you know, funeral sounds and stuff like that, and, and people speaking in Vietnamese to sound like ghosts and stuff like that. So yeah, it's really creepy, especially like listening just to the raw tape itself. Like the tape is in this video, but just like hearing the tape, it's pretty creepy. Um, you know, especially like say if you listen to it at night, like in a forest, I imagine that's probably pretty creepy. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it's like tape number 10 or something like that. There's like other tapes that have not been actually like, um, they're still confidential. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, but yeah, this is, you know, just based on that idea of like just, um, you know, the military, the U.S., uh, you know, the Marines and stuff, you know, playing these tapes in the middle of the night and, you know, trying to, you know, scare the Vietnamese, the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese army. But then also with like a horror twist to it too, like it starts off, you know, sort of quote unquote realistic where you've got these helicopters playing the the tape and stuff like that and the soldiers on the ground. But then when the tape stops, you can still hear the sounds, you know, like there's a creepy sort of monster in the force and it just sort of ends, you know, sort of leaves it open to interpretation and your imagination too, whether or not the soldiers defeat the monster or if the monster is just, you know, just a Viet Cong in disguise or something like that trying to freak them out. Or, you know, it may be a lighthearted uh, way too, like, oh, it's just a guy messing around, just, you know, just another another army guy just messing around with the guys, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's all open to interpretation. That's why I leave these endings very ambiguous because I want you to think, uh, you know, what's what ending do you want to have? You know, what's what is uh, what, what do you think happens in the end? So that's, that's sort of my mentality behind that uh to leave it open-ended but uh yeah that was a lot of fun to mess around with uh i also mess around with like new color grading stuff too i use uh, davinci resolve now it's a really great program it's free too it's really great i'm not sure if there's like a, a premium version or not i've really looked into that i'm sure there probably is but the free one it gives you a lot of options like there's so much stuff you can do this of course is not you know sponsored um and you know you can like just do various things including color grading too which is a lot of fun i've always really wanted to get into color grading and, uh, you know, using Windows Live Movie Maker, you know, <laughs> the color grading options are not, uh, there's not a lot of them, are there? No, it's just like various filters, like all the filters you see in my videos are pretty much, that's that's what those are from, you know, black and white, they have like three different types of black and white uh, with various channels muted and stuff like that. Um, it's pretty cool. And then, you know, you have uh, sepia tone and, you know, the blue filter for whatever reason <laughs> is why not. Uh, and then you have like, you know, just other stuff too, like the, the sort of the, uh, rainbow one and stuff like that. I think it's called like spectrum or something like that and you know different effects like that uh, But this though really allows you to fine-tune and like really, you know Just mess around with the coloring and stuff and that's where I got this from like the green look of it That's from DaVinci Resolve. I just sort of unmuted most of the things except for like the green channels I think and just sort of messed around and tried to get like a nice color I wanted it to be sort of like a faded now like a bright in your face green It's sort of like almost like a sort of foresty green I suppose so that was that was pretty fun to mess around with I also use that for other stuff too, like if you've seen, um, I think it's, yeah, Men on the Moon, like when they go into Lewis's brain and like they go to like Cheese World or whatever, and you know, it's it's all yellow and stuff like that, and, like the Apocalypse World too is all yellow and stuff like that too, uh, and also in Men on the Moon, or orange, orangey sort of color. Yeah, that's all DaVinci Resolve. So yeah, it's a great program, and I used it specifically for this too, like that was like the first time I used it for like an entire Lego project, so that was fun. And yeah, Wandering Soul, pretty simple, but it was a fun time. All right, so next we have white noise. I had this idea. Uh, I, I sleep with a noise machine, white noise machine, and I was turning it on and I accidentally turned it off. And like, it was just like dead silent. And it was like really eerie and kind of creepy. Just like, just like this idea of like constant noise. But then like the jump scare is that the noise stops. And I sort of was just <laughs> was like, whoa, <laughs> I was just, just standing there. And I was like, oh, that's, that's kind of creepy. I was like, wait. That's an idea right there, short film idea. So I, I turned it into a short film. It was very basic, you know, just the shots of this guy around the house. I actually even like thought of filming this in live action, but I don't quite have the equipment to do it properly. Like I'd have to have like, you know, um, have to mess around with lighting and stuff like that too. And it'd be really hard to do since I don't have like too many like options and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, you know, this guy just wandering around the house, just very basic sort of like, in a sense, like it's it's sort of like a calming thing where um, you know you're just watching this guy and it's it's just you hear the white noise and stuff like that. Like white noise is typically meant to be calming, unless it's like used in like horror situations when you know it's not exactly meant to be calming, right? Uh, but in this case, so I wanted it to sort of like lull you into like a sense of security of just like oh this guy is just walking around, everything's fine. 
But then there's like little subtle things of like uh, different sound effects that I threw in just like in the mix that are sort of low, but you can kind of hear them. Uh, same in another project we'll be talking about in just a second. But you can kind of hear different sound effects and stuff. Um, sort of it feels like feels like I'm trying to like like maybe like uh, bring up some tension just a little bit. Just like, oh, is there something behind the doors or something behind the refrigerator door? No, no, there's not. You know, just sort of like this this sort of like build up and like false sort of like, you know, false building up, I guess, where it's, where it's not exactly like anything is happening. It's just like, oh, you know. Just trying to get, <laughs> trying to get the hard racing just a little bit. Just like trying to think of like, oh, maybe there's some something there. Maybe there's a monster. But then in the end, when like the noise machine turns off, there's not like a loud jump scare noise. It's just like boom, just right in your face for a second, and then that's it. So that was pretty fun. Um, you know, based on a real life thing that I had to deal with. You know, no monsters thankfully turned off my noise machine, but it was just sort of like in that moment, just like wow, that just feels really creepy. So there we go. Yeah, white noise, pretty simple, but uh, it was fun. Then we have, uh, have a great day. I had this idea of just, like, you know, this happy, like, you know, the minifigures are very happy most of the time. Like, there's some minifigures that aren't so happy, some grumpy minifigures, even some angry minifigures. But for the most part, they're pretty happy. So I really like that idea of just, like, that, um, that contrast of, like, wow, these minifigures are so happy. You can make them do such terrible things, but they're happy about it, right? Wow. Uh, so I really just made this minifigure, this, uh, this woman, this police officer, uh, that's corrupt. And, you know, she's very happy. You know, her, her smile is, like, the only thing, you know, that you really uh, see sometimes. Like, you don't see the person getting killed or whatever. You just see the smiley face and stuff like that. So I really wanted to mess around with that. Like, just this sort of contrast between, like, you know, um, sort of like a gradual descent into darkness and horror, perhaps, where, uh, you know, this person, like, oh, they look like a great person. But, then you know, they're involved in, like, darker stuff. And then eventually, like, you know, <laughs> they, they actually have to kill their husband. Yeah, so there you go. So that was uh, that was a lot of fun to do. Another very basic short film. Um, that just sort of came out of the idea of just looking at the minifigure faces and stuff like that and just realizing, like, just how happy these guys are no matter what situation they're in, you know, they can still be happy. So that was uh, a fun time. <laughs> and just, like, I really wanted to, like, portray, like, the emotionlessness of just this character. Like, even though they're smiling, <laughs> they're, there's not really too much going on in their head, it seems like, right? Like, they're just smiling, but there's not really, like, any, like, sort of emotion. Like, there's not really any remorse or whatever just like in just the fact that they, you know they have to do these ter terrible things but they don't care so there you go yeah that was uh have a great day um and then last i'll never say goodbye i was listening to the song from the video uh, can't stay mad at you by uh skeeter davis i believe is her name and you know it's such a great song such a happy song i was like this, this is great i love this i found it because i used another one of her songs in anthology um end of the world or something like that i don't remember exactly the title of it um but it's the song that plays at the end of the first episode and it's the song that the episode is named after uh but i, I you know i really liked her music and i liked that song too and i thought you know <laughs> you know of course me you know with the twisted mind of making these short films like i did something like this too with um what's that song um indian lake or whatever uh you know this the sort of music video that's actually just like <laughs> that it starts off great but it sort of gradually gets more horrific with the idea of this native american sort of ghost spirit guy killing these these two campers and stuff like that and now this time we've got this woman who is uh you know <laughs> who is, is killing her dates like it starts off with the shot of the closet i wanted that to be very purposeful i was actually gonna have like a, a small like little audio thing of me just saying like uh don't go in the closet again and again but it was like really quiet and like whispery so you couldn't actually like discern it so you could like kind of hear it but it like gradually gets louder and louder but I decided against that I was like ah maybe that's too on the nose so I started off with in the closet the shot and then you know it ends with sort of like a closet shot too kind of um and just like I really wanted to make it look happy but there's like there's there's moments where like there's like a, a brief like one pretty much one frame shot in there like you get to see like the the horror face at the end um, I wanted to make sure that like it's it's very subtle like you can definitely like if you pause it or if you're like if you're watching it carefully you'll see it but if you're just sort of like half half watching it you might not notice like wait what was that it was like well flash uh, so that was a lot of fun I really wanted to uh, not exactly like spike up the horror just yet but just like have just enough so you can taste it's like wait there's something something's wrong here so yeah she's going she's she's bringing her dates back home and you know they look in the closet maybe and then you know she kills them and puts them in the closet I don't know why you know she just messed up uh, this is actually based off of if you can believe it, uh, <laughs> it may sound silly, but uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, there's a there's these series online on YouTube. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's VHS tapes are like designed in sort of a similar fashion where it's like it's supposed to be like something very normal, just like uh, a training video or something. But then it turns into like a horror like video in the end, too. It was based on this one clip, actually, that I, I saw that I really liked. I thought it was just like 
really just just uh you know horrific and sort of terrifying just like it's very simple and just like so very well done though definitely better than i you know sort of accomplished here but uh i'll just play it right now and yeah right so very creepy like you know just like the face is creepy but then you know just hearing you know there's the sound criminal for a second but then like it just stops like just dead silence i sort of really like that so i wanted to make something kind of like that too where you know her face just sort of stays normal but then it just like turns into like this horrific like monster looking thing so yeah that was uh that was pretty fun that's pretty much all i have to say about these short films but thank you very much for watching i look forward to making more and i'll see you all next time Bye bye